And in the first verse, it says, early on the first day of the week. Uh, This early on the first day of the week is, in fact, why we have church on Sunday. Uh, Other traditions still use the Sabbath on Saturday, and up until that time, that would have been normal uh, worship day. But we are a resurrected church. We believe in the resurrected Jesus, and so we celebrate uh, our worship on Sunday morning. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked inside at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was lying in in its place separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They did not understand to this point from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over and looked inside the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said. I don't know where they have put him. And At this she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize it was Jesus. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. And Jesus said, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out, teacher, do not hold on to me, Jesus said, for for I have not yet ascended to my Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. May God bless the reading of his word in all who hear it this day. Well, it is Easter morning. A day for celebration, families getting together, of course, and there are Easter egg hunts, maybe more than what you're going to experience here today. And of course, there is candy. Do you know it's the biggest candy day of the year? Even bigger than Halloween. And so it is a day of celebration, and you know what? It's okay to celebrate. God wants us to celebrate. God likes it when we laugh. It is life-giving. So we should take part in that. But we also know, and we bring back into a time of worship and maybe to a time of thought that we have during the day, is that what is the real Easter message, you know? It's new life. New life. New life as we see it in Christ rising from the dead and the new life that God offers to each of us. And it is also a time of new life, is it not? With spring, we look around and we see things budding all around us. So we, <laughs> we say to the world, Jesus has risen from the dead today, and much of the world answers to us, so what? What does that have to do with me? So what that your God, Jesus, may have lived 2,000 years ago, may have been crucified, may have been put in a tomb, may have uh, risen from the dead, what good is that to me? In other words, there is a gap. There is a gap between what believers know, that Jesus rose from the dead and it's life-giving, and what many in the world don't know. And who is to fill that gap? That would be you and me. Last week we studied, what is your hope for tomorrow? In other words, what gives you hope? And talking about your source of hope, because that's how you will live out your life. This week we have a second question for you, it's a, and, and it's this. What hope are you giving to the world? What is your life message? Does your life message fill that gap? You and I, all day long, share with each other on Facebook or even in our greetings that the Lord is risen. And you know what? We're the only ones that know what that means. To many in this world, that means nothing. 
because they're facing today's hardships, they're facing illnesses, they're facing loss, they're facing all kinds of things, and they're saying, what good is that to me, that you have that belief? You and I, and we've talked about this before, are either a positive or negative impact on the world around us and the people around us. Filling that gap is to be that positive person that gives them that message of life. I want to talk to you a little bit about the person who carried the message today, Mary Magdalene. Uh, There is tradition about Mary Magdalene that she was a prostitute, but if you read scripture, it really doesn't tell us that at all. It tells us that she uh, was a person who had demons. Now, we don't know what demons meant at that time. You know, was was she mentally ill? Did she have something else wrong with her? Did she have a gambling addiction? I don't know. But Jesus removed that. And when he did, she became a follower of Jesus. We hear a lot about the 12 disciples who followed Jesus, but there were many others who followed Jesus. And Mary Magdalene and a group of women had a specific ministry. They supported Jesus' ministry monetarily. They were financial supporters of Jesus' ministry. She was fiercely loyal. In fact, at the day that Jesus was crucified at the cross, there were three people there that we know of. Mary, the mother of Jesus, John, the disciple, and Mary Magdalene. Those three were there at his death. They were faithful to that, to him to the very end, when the rest of them all ran away. So we know this about her. We know that she was fiercely loyal. We know that Jesus had healed her, and she became this wonderful disciple, this follower, and she carried this first message uh, that Jesus was risen. It was her that Jesus chose to show himself to first. A woman that most people would have looked the other way or judged her harshly, But she got the message of who Jesus was. Jesus healed her, and she she was the one that Jesus revealed himself to her. She fills the gap. She answers that question not only 2,000 years ago, but we still read about her today. And if when we read her story, we see that she tells us this story of the risen Christ. Years ago, when I was a very young man, a teenager, I... uh, was not living at home. I lived with a friend of mine over, and uh, we had an apartment on the west side of Waterloo, and I worked at a department store. And I met an elderly gentleman who was at the end of his career. I I still don't know. I've been trying to figure out if he was 45 or 48 years older than I. He was quite a bit older. But we became friends. Mr. Thayer was a a man's man. Uh, He was also a gentle giant. Uh, You could see by his eyes and the lines on his face, he had lived a very hard life. And he knew the inside of a bar a whole lot better than knew the inside of a church. But something had happened to him along the way. Something that changed him on the inside. And he became an extremely positive force in the lives of of other people. He greeted everyone with a smile. He was always lifting people up. And he started this concept that I didn't get the words to until another mentor many, many years later. But you could tell by the way he treated people and the way he was patient with people, he understood that everybody was doing the best they knew how to do. Regardless of whether you agreed with what they were doing or not. They were doing the best they knew how to do because that had always worked for them up to this point. And if you wanted them to have a different life or to do things differently, then you need to teach them a better way of living. You need to teach them something new. And he seemed to dedicate his life to that. He always was patient, like I said, and he was always, when we would go around and talk to people, there were people that weren't doing a very good job. And of course, being a young kid, a teenager, I'm thinking, hey, fire him, you know. Let's let's get something going here. Let's get something good. And he would say, no, no, no. They have not reached their full potential. They have another opportunity. We're going to, and he would bring people back in to being very productive and very positive. And uh, and like I say, I, I knew him as a friend, lived near him, and his wife Marvel used to bake the best German chocolate cakes, and they would always make sure I had some. So we were, we were good friends, even though we had this vast difference in age. 
Now, I thought he was always trying to manipulate me a little bit. He figured I was going to screw up because he seemed to have this amazing clarity of life, and I didn't have the sense God gave a rock. But we seemed to get along, and I was kind of like, you know, the sidekick. And, uh, and all along, I got to watch this way that this man uh, brought people alive again. And you see, that's, that's, the, that's the whole message for you and I today that I have for you, is that there is a gap between what you believe and what you know to be true and what the rest of the world who needs to know has. And the only person that can close that gap is you in your situation and me and mine. And we are to find ways to bring people closer to Christ that are not negative, that are not judgmental. We just don't throw a Bible at them and say, get, get to reading. We talk to them about the saving grace of Jesus. We tell them what it did in our own life. And we begin to close the gap and show them a better way of life. So that, so what, is not their only answer. In a few months, my kids and grandkids will come for the summer visit. My oldest grandson and I have had a tradition for, gosh, I don't know how many years, uh, as many years as he could say, Papa, let's go. Uh, we go to a field behind our house where it's extra dark on a clear summer night. And we will gaze up into the stars because he loves astronomy. And two years ago, last year it wasn't quite as clear, but the two years ago, I think it was, it was a super clear night. And he and I were out there, far away from the house, no lights, and we're sitting out there in our little chairs, and we're looking up, and the Milky Way came into focus, more beautiful than I had seen it in many, many years. And the two of us just sat there, I don't know how long we sat there, but it was so long, and it was, we, we didn't even hardly speak, but what was going through my spirit, and I believe what was going through his is look at the vastness of this universe. Look at the awesome universe that God created. There has to be something more out there than me. There has to be something bigger out there than my life. There has to be something more important and bigger than my little problems. And it starts to bring us into this focus that we, we start to look around and we are more aware and we are more open. And the next thing we know, there's a breakthrough and we see some reality. And we start to see the truth of what we celebrate today. The truth is, as we walk around in our daily lives, just like today, it is also vast. It is also a vast universe, filled with mystery. It is amazing what's going on around us. And someone will come to us. Someone will come into our life and share these positive mysteries of life with us. And we are to do the same for others. And we ask ourselves the question this morning, what hope are we giving the world? What is different about the world because you and I are here? What different in, in the world yesterday, at the end of the night, day, when you laid down your head and you look back at the wake of your life as you walk through it, how did you make someone's life better? And it was there a time when you did not. To do that, we must focus on something outside ourselves. We must look outside our own needs. The problem is for me, being human, is that there are times in my life when I am very self-centered. When I am hurt, when I am dealing with loss, when I look around the room and only my needs need to be met. Some days are like that for us. I understand that. But for the majority of the time that we walk around planet Earth, we have the capability, if we would do so, is to look beyond ourselves. Is to look at our neighbor, look at our friend, look at our, our own family, and see that there is a gap. See that they need reassurance. See that they need God's love and God's word in a way that only we can fill it. So that's the message of today. I know it's not quite as traditional as going through the actual events of Easter Sunday, but you've been through them before. I've been, I saw Facebook this morning. You all know what's going on. But that next step is to understand that there's a huge gap between what you and I agree on and what the rest of the world needs. And if you don't believe that, turn on the news. Our leaders, our politicians, our people who should know better Listen to the way they talk. Let's look at what they are doing. They don't get it. 
They can say that the Lord is risen and just go right after something else that does not coincide with what God wants for our lives. It's you and I that have that positive message. It's you and I have that message that we can carry to the world. You and I will have that opportunity when somebody says, so what, to fill that gap. And to fill that gap the same way Mary did. To say, this is the experience that I had with Jesus. He healed me of all of this. He took away everything in my life that was negative and he gave me new life. Mr. Thayer, though he didn't say it that way, his life depicted what had happened. Whatever event took place in his life, he saw beyond himself and he knew there was a greater power at work and he allowed it to work. And he did not put people down, he lifted people up. And that's how you and I are to share our faith. It is to be a positive message. And the most positive message that you can share many times is to be honest about where you came from. Is to be honest to say, hey, you know what? I really didn't have it all together and still don't. I am human. I fail every day. I was really, you think I'm okay now? You think I'm a mess now? I was really a mess a few years ago. But then I came to the reality of there is a higher power, there is a God. And that God loves me, that God created me, and God loves me. And also, God kind of turned me loose in the world, and I messed it up, right? Uh, I, I, he should not have given me the keys of the car, but he did. And I messed it up, and yet God loves me so much, God has made a way for me to come back to him and have the gift of eternal life. You and I can fill that gap. I pray that you are open to that, and I pray that you see that. And you know, one of the things that we can do is, just like I said earlier, is every day, every evening before we close our eyes, look back at the wake that we have left behind today. Have we been a positive impact on everyone we've met? Or have we just taken what we wanted from those we have met? Fulfilled our needs and just moved forward. If we have... We're going to blend into the world and nobody will notice. But if we have done the opposite, if we have lifted others up, if we have, we have shown them new life, given them new hope, then that's the thing that you and I are supposed to do with our hope that we've received. And we can actually change the world around us. That's the way Christianity began, person to person. And that's the only way it will continue, is you and I filling that gap. Let us pray this morning. Lord God, we love you. We do. We come into your presence and we worship you. We raise you up. We celebrate Jesus rising from the dead. But Lord, we also come to you and say we are ready. We are ready to be your word, your, mission, your hands and feet, and your heart in this world. Guide us to do so. Help us to be a positive impact on everyone we meet and to lift them closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There's a lot missing from these abbreviated services. When I get to this point, I was, I, we didn't get to sing together a couple times. I didn't get to have the kids come up, which I got to tell you, I, I love all of you, but that's the most fun thing in the world to do. So I know we have to cut this short, and I know we're going to go on to our Easter egg hunt and all the things that you have going. But thank you so much for being here. Um, you got to admit, it's way better than last Easter. We did, we're, we're getting better. So um, I, I thank you again for that. And uh, please receive the closing blessing. Lord God, as we leave this place, help us to take with us your word and your love and to share it with those you place in our path. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And go in peace. Jesus, my
Forever with the saints too.